this is a book that I've wanted to do for a long time. So one of the ideas behind the book was to say it's not supposed to be a manifesto, it's supposed to be a range of ideas from a variety of writers, some very well known, some less known, about some of these key issues, perspectives we rarely read about in the mainstream press. The distinction between left and right amongst politics seems to have collapsed a bit. It's actually an era of bipartisanship around some of the harder edge Indigenous issues and the intervention would be one of them. People have vested their faith in, first in Kevin Rudd and the Greens and so on to actually deliver something on the climate and what they actually have delivered is the most unpopular uh, left-wing government, centre-left government in Australia since the Great Depression. Someone called Graham Bell just died. Yeah. Graham Bell was a pioneer jazz musician in Melbourne, really responsible for popularising jazz in Australia. But what people don't recognise and don't talk about is that Bell was a member of the Eureka Youth League, the youth organisation of the Communist Party. And in fact, the Communist Party of Australia played a major role in introducing jazz to Australia. And this is something that's hardly ever acknowledged and hardly ever talked about. The Communist Party also played a major role in popularising folk music in this country, as well as pioneering film criticism, and a whole series of other things which is now totally forgotten. That the history of the left in this country has been totally wiped from the historical memory. So the genesis of this book came out of the last election where Anthony and I were discussing how, on the one hand, there was a cigarette paper's worth of difference between the two parties, and precisely because of that, um, the election seemed particularly shrill. You know that old joke that people make about um, campus politics, that the, the fights are so intense because the stakes are so small? <laughs> well, that was what the last election seemed like. And we started to think, well, there's a whole series of people, who, there's a whole um, layer of people who aren't being represented in any of these debates, and it's time to try and um, get some of these ideas into, into the public debate. Why on so many of the key issues of our time, since 9-11 particularly, whether it's to do with Afghanistan, Iraq, climate change, the economy, the GFC, indigenous rights in Australia and elsewhere, virtually every single mainstream pundit in Australia, across pretty much the entire media, has been wrong on everything. I mean, it actually takes skill to be wrong consistently. And yet, despite the fact that they're wrong on everything, why are they continually supported and endorsed for being wrong? On so many of these kind of questions, if we simply are going to be relying on the two major parties, or for that matter, some parts of the Greens for the answers, we have a problem. We should be encouraged to actually have debates, both publicly, which often is shunned by many of the Labour and Liberal Party, and indeed by the Greens, I think, mistakenly, about some of these kind of questions, not least climate change. If we're talking about for or of the left, some people might think our chapter is against the left. Overwhelming, dominant idea everywhere on the left is that, of course, we're going to have to start with some kind of market mechanism, regulation of markets, in order to fix the climate problem. And our argument is really this has been a massive distraction, not at all to do about fixing what is the greatest challenge of our time. But it's actually been a way to shift that whole debate into a whole realm of markets solve things, business comes first and so on. The thing is climate scientists um, aren't the people who make up policy about carbon markets. That's a conglomerate of financiers and um, right-wing economists and even left-wing economists who've now taken up all the right-wing neoliberal ideas. It's a real problem that the history of the left has been wiped from this country because a lot of the ideas that have disappeared are really tremendously important.